Um, I, I know most of you are, are here thinking, Oye, pero ese es el hijo de Luis Miranda. You are correct. Um, my, my father uh, had a show on Telemundo called Primera Plana, uh, I think at 2 a.m. on Friday nights. I was one of the four people who watched it. Uh, and he still uh, has Línea Informativa on Radio Wado uh, every morning. So we're, uh, we're a part of this organization uh, as well. Um, thank you for having me uh, to deliver your keynote. Uh, I would like to let you know that I am deeply, quite movingly envious of you. And I'm going to make a, a confession here uh, that I haven't really made anywhere else. Uh, before the four-hour extravaganza of musicals uh, I have subjected my parents to, I wanted to be a, a television journalist, just like Geraldo on the TV. <laughs> it's good that I went into musical theater. Uh, I pronounce my name Lin-Manuel Miranda. Um, I grew up here. Uh, my parents were both born in Puerto Rico. Um, and so I grew up with uh, the central question uh, that I think a lot of us uh, grow up with, which is where exactly do we belong and where is home? And, uh, and if we are Puerto Rican, uh, why don't we live on the island? And are we meant to live on that island? And if we are from New York, but Puerto Ricans or New Yorican, uh, what traditions do we carry with us? Do we speak Spanish? Do we eat arroz con gandules, even though we may prefer pasta? Um, what, what do we take with us, and what do we pass on to our children? Um, these are things I struggled with. I remember the first time uh, I went to uh, Puerto Rico for, for summer vacation. I, prior to that, uh, the way I saw Hispanics on TV were janitors, criminals, and talking chihuahuas. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, and I remember being struck, even at about that age that you saw me in that video, um, being in Puerto Rico and realizing, oh, the doctors here are Puerto Rican. Oh. The lawyers here are Puerto Rican. Oh, the journalists here are Puerto Rican. And here we can belong. Uh, here is where we belong and we can do anything we want. Back in New York, we are janitors, we are criminals, and we are talking chihuahuas. Um, and I was, I was really struck by this. Um, as you all know and has been told many times, uh, I, I was in love with musicals from a very young age. I subjected my parents to a lethal dosage in sixth grade, uh, doing Bye Bye Birdie and West Side Story. And West Side Story was really the, the killer. I loved uh, that show. And I remember in 1998, um, there was a new Broadway musical starring Latinos that was going to be coming to the stage. And... Uh, it was going to star one of my musical heroes, Ruben Blades, uh, who wrote uh, one of my favorite lyrics ever, which is, No hay bala que mate la verdad cuando lo defiende la razón. The opening. And, uh, and Mark Anthony, who is, you know, the young, the, the Sinatra uh, of our time. Um, I mean, I'm not talking old, washed up Sinatra. I'm talking young, capital years Sinatra, that golden voice. And the songs were going to be by Paul Simon, uh, who had to this day has never written a bad song. I thought, here comes the musical I've always wanted to see. A musical about Latinos that tells our story, not as part of gang warfare, although West Side Story remains a masterpiece, uh, but tells our story. I don't have to tell you I didn't see that show. Um, it's an incredible score. Paul Simon to this day has never written a bad song. Uh, but I remember being hit in the gut when I saw the Entertainment Weekly review, and it said, it's 40 years after West Side Story, and we're knife-wielding murderers again. And uh, that hit me like a punch to the stomach, and uh, I made the realization that I think many of us make at a certain point, which is that no one is going to hand you anything. No one is going to write your dream show. It's your dream. Um, and I started writing in the Heights shortly after that. I was a sophomore in college. Um, I applied for the theater space at Wesleyan University, which was student-run. Woo-woo! Wes, what's up? Um, and uh, they gave me a weekend. They said, you have the theater from April 25th to 27th. And all I had was a title in the Heights, which I had been doodling in my astronomy notebook uh, in a loop, Into the Heights, the Heights. That was a Fox show. 
in the Heights. Um, and uh, I just put everything I, know, I knew into it. Uh, everything I know being later being a song title uh, in, in the show. And uh, it was an 80-minute, one-act show. And um, I did what we all do, which was I pulled the 20 Latino kids I knew from all over campus uh, and put them in the show, because uh, I was one of two Hispanic theater majors. Uh, so as a result, Everyone on campus had a friend in the show because they had their friend who was in choir who was in the show or they had their friend who was on the basketball team who was in the show. Uh, and so it was a big campus hit. Um, and as the show has evolved, I find that the questions I was dealing with uh, when I was six years old and in the airport in Puerto Rico are the questions that have taken over the show. What is home? Where do we go? When I, when I graduated from Wesleyan, I moved back to my neighborhood in Inwood, uh, and there was a, a Starbucks on 181st Street um, and a very fancy liquor store where uh, my bodega used to be, where my grandmother used to play illegal slot machines in the back. And uh, the neighborhood was disappearing, and uh, as uh, we continued to work on the show, this story of, of gentrification um, became central uh, to the to the plot of the show, and and we tried very hard not to make any bad guys um, because it's a very complex process. When you consider the fact that the opening scene of West Side Story was shot where Lincoln Center now resides, um, there's no mustache twirling villain in our show that says, "I'm going to build a parking lot where your bodega is." Um, it's a complex process. Um, whereby the people who make a neighborhood special can no longer afford to live there. Um, I find that uh, heartbreakingly true uh, over and over again. Um, I remember being at Wesleyan, uh, and the level of attrition among Latino kids uh, was, was staggering, and, and they have faces and names for me. You can read the statistics for yourself, but I remember my friends saying, I'm going to take a semester off, I'm going to work, I'm going to be right back, and I never saw them again. That's a reality, um, and so that's one of the stories that gets that that our main character Nina struggles with in the show. That's folded itself uh, into the fabric of this show, and uh, I have spent the last seven years, eight years, really my young adult life, uh, writing about all these things I care about, and uh, and in terms of gentrification, you know, some people in the show, as you will see if you go see it, um, some go along. Some sell their businesses so they can move on. Some sacrifice for their children. Some realize it's their job to stay. Um, but the entire time, uh, Chiara and I really, our focus was on, uh, on what you focus on every day. Uh, tell the truth, write with love, and love what you write. Um, no matter what those people do, um, there are things that the characters in our show do that are, are abhorrent to me. Um, there are things that they do that are wonderful, uh, but I understand every single one of them. And, uh, and that is your job as well as journalists. Um, and, uh, you know, here we are later. You've seen the, the highlight reel um, of my life, and, and it's been fantastic. But, but the, same, uh, the same criteria exists in, in both our professions. Write what you love and love what you write about. Um, so uh, I would urge you to continue to do that, uh, to continue to um, see, uh, write what you haven't seen. Uh, it, it's funny, uh, when the reviews came out, uh, most of the mainstream reviews of the show, they were very complimentary, and uh, many of them said, it's a wonderful show, the music is great, but it's so unrealistic. And then I would read the El Diario review, or I would read the El Nuevo Día review, and they would say, the show is wonderful, and it's dancing, and finally, it's realistic. <laughs> that says a lot. That says a lot about how uh, we are portrayed in the media. That says a lot about how we see ourselves, and uh, we see accuracy. Um, accuracy and love aren't mutually exclusive. Um, and uh, you can write about your neighborhood with love uh, without turning a blind eye to, to the uglier things in it, um, but you can write about it uh, accurately. And so um, if you haven't seen the show, uh, let me take a page from my eight-year-old self. If you like excitement and comedy all in one, this is the show for you. Um, but I would urge you uh, scholarship students, first of all, congratulations. Uh, second of all, write what you love, write what you haven't seen, and love what you write. Thank you very much. <laughs>